Now, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on your perspective on the world, and welcome to the Trading Coaches Playbook. My name is Brandon Wendell, Charter Market Technician, and I'll be your host for the next hour or so as we go through, uh, well, my presentation. It's my class, my show. I get to do what I want. <laughs> anyway, uh, so welcome, everybody. Let me go ahead and turn on the chat here so I can see that as well. Perfect. Good morning, Kevin, or afternoon, actually, I guess, where you are. Uh, yeah, so anyway, before we get started, just need to go over a few things. We are not registered broker dealers or investment advisors. We're taking a look at the markets from an educational standpoint only, and not telling you to buy, sell, or hold any particular securities. There's always risk involved in the markets. Surprise, surprise, right? Uh, yeah, we can never eliminate the risk. All we can try to do is minimize the risk that we deal with in the markets. And we are not subject to trading restrictions either. We can have a position in a security or initiate one at any time. So that being said, uh, hello, Brenda. Hello, Helen. Hello, Kevin. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we got a lot of things going on here at Wealth Builders HQ. And sorry, Lucy's trying to lick my ankle, uh, my puppy here. Anyway, uh, we got some online workshops that are uh, premium ones. We also have a lot of free online workshops, so be sure to join us. Obviously, you're here today, but every Friday we do the Trading Coaches Playbook and it alternates who's going to be there. Uh, I am also going to be doing a special session on how to trade the markets on August 17th. I think that's me, noon to one. We also have Power Hour every Monday, which you can join us for as well. And just a lot of things going on. So make sure you stay in touch with us and hopefully join us for some of those workshops. A lot of good information there. And you can stay in touch with us as well through social media, obviously, all over the place. Uh, you can also stay in touch with me personally on uh, Twitter. I'm at Trader B Dub. It's not showing there, but I'm also on Twitter as well and a bunch of other places. So, that being said, uh, I'll, I pop this up here for me as well. We also have the E Mini Think Tank that uh, keeps us pretty active. I trade the futures markets three days a week live in the uh, basically with the, the live markets, we take a look at what's going on there. I trade in a simulated mode just for legal reasons, but we're looking at live data and taking advantage of some of the opportunities I see out there. So if you're interested in joining me for that, let us know. Uh, you know, I'll give you the links for that in just a little bit. I'm also gonna be talking about another program that I run and kind of what I'm gonna be talking about today is spread trading. I have a program called Wealth with Spreads that I'm in charge of. And I, actually that's what I was just doing before I came on with you guys today is I'm creating a video that gets released every week uh, that goes into spread trades. So I'll talk a little bit about what spread trades are first. I'm not talking about options here, by the way. When I'm dealing with these kinds of spreads, these are only spreads on futures. So it's a little different. It's not anything other than futures trading. And basically a spread, well, you'll see, it's nothing more than buying a contract and selling a contract at the exact same time. So just taking advantage of high probability trade opportunities. That's all. So most people have heard of spreads. They think immediately about options. This has nothing to do with options. Okay, so we're not going to look at options at all, at least not right now. I do trade options as well. I trade futures, Forex, and options. Uh, and crypto, but for the most part, kind of holding off on crypto right now <laughs> until the winter's over, so to speak. But basically, I'm going to introduce you to something called spread trading for the futures markets. Like I said, it's involving multiple contracts at the same time. And we're going to talk about what the heck is a spread, uh, why you might want to be interested in trading spreads, and how can you trade them? You know, you got to understand them first before you can trade them. But obviously, there's ways of doing it right and ways of doing it wrong. As I mentioned, if I go out to my browser here, if I can find that. Oops, it's the wrong spot. There it is. And I go out to my members page, I can click on my Wealth with Spreads subscription, and there's the program right there. So basically what happens is, as I mentioned, every weekend I produce a video. So right here is Trade Ideas, and I put out a video as well as a PDF that shares anywhere from four to sometimes 12 trade ideas in that spreads market, which I'll explain what that is as well. So you can actually learn a lot more about this. Uh, there's Right here educational videos that are self-paced so i have you know how to trade on a certain brokerage how to do spread trading one and two trading routine how to find zones how to find targets all sorts of stuff seasonality how to chart the spreads properly so i teach you how to do the spread trading step by step in an on-demand type of uh, manner there and lee i don't know if you have the link for the uh, wealth of spreads that's what i'm looking for really 
uh, just so you know, what Lee also put out there was um, a little link right there, a day in the life of an online trader. If you're interested, totally something different here, but I'm going to be going up to New York in October. And you can see that if you click the link that was there, the day in the uh, life of an online trader, if you want to join me, October 27th, I think it is. And the price is there. It's a one day workshop where you're going to be able to interact with me live. Uh, $749, I guess, is the charge of what they got for that right now. And basically, if you're interested in meeting up with me, uh, we'll do a full day kind of walking you through step by step what I do as a trader to prep for the markets find opportunities, managing trades. I'm going to run through the whole gamut. So you're going to get basically like a, if you were me for one day, what I do, and you'll get the full ex exposure to that. Uh, it's kind of cool. So we're going to be doing that. I haven't done a live class like that in quite some time. So it'd be kind of cool. We're going to be doing that in New York, uh, Long Island, I believe, actually, in October, October 27th. I think that's a Thursday. So if you're interested, that's that link that was just put out there. But anyway, getting back to you, let's jump in the education. You know, I want to get into what are spreads. And basically a spread is simply buying a contract while simultaneously selling a related contract. Okay, and I say related, it can't be the same contract. That would just exit the position. So it's got to be something that's related. You can't just buy a contract because you feel like and buy it, uh, sell a different one that has no relationship to the first. Okay, we're doing this, really, it's, it's kind of like trading in general. When you trade a futures contract, for instance, let me go out to uh, my browser again. Whoops, wrong page. Sorry, so many things open here. If I take a look at the S&P futures, for instance, okay, and I'll go out to a daily time frame. Here we are on the S&P futures on a daily time frame. I can go out and buy this contract, or I could sell the contract, depending on where I believe prices are going to go. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm exchanging U.S. dollars for that contract. And if the contract goes up in value, I can sell that contract and receive more U.S. dollars back. That's it. You're exchanging money for a contract. What we're going to be doing is spread is slightly different. We're actually going to be trading for the price difference between two contracts. So in a way, you're kind of trading one contract for another. If anybody's ever done a currency trade or a Forex trade, that's basically a spread. You're trading one contract against the other or one currency against the other. So we can usually do this as a single transaction, but sometimes you have to do it separately. Just depends on the type of broker you use. Some brokers are set up better for spread trades than others. So just be careful, be mindful of what you use. You want to always have the right tools, obviously. And again, we're doing this to take advantage of a relationship between two securities changing. That's all, the price relationship. So as an example, if I'm looking at crude oil, you know, I used the, the S&P earlier, but here we'll look at crude oil. And this is an older contract, it doesn't matter, okay? But we can see crude oil, uh, the April contract in this case was moving at a certain pace. And we can compare it to a related contract of both crude oil but the first contract in blue expires in April while the second contract in orange expires in December. So they have different months of expiration and therefore may move at different paces and sometimes even different directions. Okay, they shouldn't move in different directions long-term because they're the same underlying security. These are futures contracts on crude oil, right? So, Basically, what we're trying to do is take advantage of that difference in price between the two. That's called the spread. That's all. And there are different types of spreads. You know, the one I just explained to you is called an intra-market spread. It's the same security, just different months. You know, when you take a look at a quote, so actually, let me go out to CME Group. There we go. So we go out to CME Group and I'll just get a quote on, let's do a NASDAQ. Usually works out pretty well. We go to quotes right now on the NASDAQ. You'll notice we have several contracts available. Although really there's only volume on three. We've got volume on the September contract, which is the next one to expire. We have 359,000 contracts traded today. December, you can see 582 contracts and even March of 2023, two contracts traded. Okay. So again, there's many more contracts available, but all the volume is on what we call the front month or near month. 
that's the contract that has the most volume. It is most of the time, but not always, the contract that's going to be expiring next. Okay. So like I said, it's not always, but it's the one that always has the most volume. So right here, this is our front month. And you notice that today it is up 1% or 127.75 points from the prior day. The December contract is also bullish, but notice it's not up as much. It's only up 122 points or 0.96%. The reason why this is not up as much, perhaps it has to do with the volume. Okay, I'm just speculating. There could be other reasons as well, but because it has less volume, it may not move as quickly as the front month. You know, it's it's lagging by about five points. Now, granted, this one's even further up. There's only two contracts traded, so there are going to be exceptions. But anyway, you can see that they don't necessarily move at the same pace, and because of that, the price difference between those two contracts can expand or contract, and that's the spread trade that we're looking for. If I go into, let's see, another security here. Oh, we don't want equities. Let's go to corn. So if I go out to corn and again, go to quotes, you'll notice there are many contracts available. September, December, March, May, July, September, again for 2023. And the volume changes. Notice the September contract, even though it's expiring next, is not the front month. Okay, remember what I said, the front month is always the one with the highest volume. That happens to be December, not September. September is 50,000 contracts, still pretty good, but the December contract is 196,000 contracts traded. So, I'm sorry, not 100, 96,000. So it has a lot more volume, obviously, right? That's the front month. But they also, again, are not moving at the same pace. The front month is up 10 and three quarters or 1.74%. While this month is only up 1.67%, uh, the back month is actually up a little bit more, 1.76% versus 1.74. So they all move at different paces. And if we were to chart them together, again, I can go out to ZCZ 2022. This is corn. And we'll go to a line chart here. Just take a look at it, clean it up a little bit as well. There we go. And actually, let's go to a five-minute chart, intraday. So we can take a look at this possibly from the beginning of the day. But I can add in ZCU 2022. That's the September contract that we were just looking at. And if we were to go from, let's say, 9.30 this morning, when the market started getting active, and we compare both of these, notice they're on percent change now you can see they're moving at different paces, okay? You can see that the orange, as I mentioned, is the uh, September contract, while the blue happens to be the December contract. They move at different paces. So as a spread trader, that's what's going to give us our profit, the difference between those two. That's all we're trying to trade. That's called the spread. Price difference between two related securities. In this case, same underlying corn, but just different months. Well, we have another type of spread. Actually, we have subdivisions. I'll get to that first. Sorry, it's subdivisions of the spread. One, we have what's called a bull spread. That's where you buy the near month and sell the back month. The rationale behind that is the front month should move up further and faster because it has heavier volume. So as an example here, if we have January versus May, okay, again, it doesn't really matter the months, whatever it is, but right there, you can see that January contract at that time was the front month. So therefore, it was moving up further and faster than the back month was. We will literally take two positions at the same time. You buy the front month, sell the back month. Well, you're going to lose on one position. Okay, You're going to make money on the long, as you can see. It went up. But you're going to be losing at the same time on the short. However, because the long makes more money than the short loses, you have a net profit because the spread or the white space between those two charts widened. That's it. That's all I'm trying to do. Take advantage of them changing. Well, we also have what's called a bear spread. That probably would have been pretty good today, perhaps, where you think that the prices are going to go to the downside. Okay. And what happens is, again, you would sell the near month and buy the back month. Okay. So we got a question coming up. Do you retain the credit when you sell the back month? I'm not sure what you mean by the credit. 
what happens is when you buy one and sell the other, you put down margin to be able to take on those positions. And if, you know, you saw, let me go back here, you're going long on one, short on the other, you're making money on the long, but losing money on the short. However, because that long is going up at a faster pace, your net position is a positive number. You are gaining. Oh no, it's totally different than an option credit spread. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I see what you mean. Yes, as an options trader, when you sell a spread, you are collecting a premium or a credit, as you say. Here you're not, okay? We're, we're actually putting in a position where we're going to be paying for one contract with margin deposit, and we're going to be shorting the other contract, but also putting down a margin deposit. So there's a net debit for this spread. So with futures trading, it's not like a credit spread or debit spread like options. No, no. You are always going to be putting in a deposit as margin to put on the spread, regardless of what it is. So yeah, it's, it's a different animal. It really is. It's not the same as a credit spread as you have in uh, options. So now I get it. Yeah. Anyway, the bear spread, as I said, would be if we're expecting these markets to go down, we're going to short the front month by the back month. Why? Because the short will gain profits if it moves down, even though the long will lose money because, again, we're going down. But because the short wins more than the uh, long loses, you're actually net positive on the position. You're making money. That's what happens. So, yeah, it's not a credit or a debit. It's a little bit different. But those are the two types of intramarket spreads. We also have what's called an intermarket spread where you can trade related securities. Typically you use the same month, but you don't have to. You know, we can do gold versus silver or you know, I can go out back to my equity markets here. I was looking at NQU 2022, that's the NASDAQ. And I can chart that, I remove this one first and clean up my chart. I can actually chart that against the Dow, right? Let's do YMU 2022. There we go. And again, if we go back to 930 this morning, you can see that the Dow in orange did not go up as fast as the NASDAQ did this morning. And therefore, the spread widened. They eventually came back together. They usually will. But that's a spread opportunity. We could have traded this in multiple ways, actually. Let me kind of expand this out a little bit, bring it back. Okay, so just make sure I get the legend here so you can see it. The blue is the NASDAQ. And then the orange, or yellowish, whatever you want to call it, <clears throat> that would be the futures. So those are the two. So you can see first thing this morning, if we had bought, let's go in here and there. Basically what we would have been doing here is you would buy the NQ and at the same time sell the YM. Okay. Why we do that? Because we expected the NASDAQ perhaps to rally faster than the Dow. Okay. There's reasons behind this. I'm going to get to those in a little bit. Now, let's say we got out of the trade about here. You know, hindsight's 2020, it's easy to see. But what would have happened in this case is we would have exited the trade at this point, right? So there we would sell NQ to exit and buy YM to exit. Now, the overall trade, you can see that the long on the NQ would have made money, but the short on the YM would have lost money. But net, we would have been positive. As you can see, I did the $4 signs because we made a lot of money on the way up there on the NASDAQ long. We would have lost a little bit of money on the Dow. Therefore, four minus two is two. We have a net positive for the trade. 
That's it. That's a intermarket spread. We could have also done the reverse right here too. You could have sold the NASDAQ, bought the Dow, and the short on the NASDAQ made more money as we moved down than the long on the Dow lost. And when they came together, we would have made more money on the spread. So this is what's called the spread widening, okay? And the spread widening is that the price difference between the two is getting larger. Okay, we call that widening. Let me type that out, spread widening. We can also look for the opposite to happen, which was this, where the spread narrows. So you can trade for the narrowing of the spread. Now, great question just came up, okay? which is, do we hold these overnight or is there too much risk? We absolutely hold these overnight. Absolutely. This is not normally a day trading strategy. It can be done, as you can see, as a day trade. But it's typically done as an overnight trade because it reduces risk in comparison to directional trading. And I'll show you how that works in just a little bit. Um, let me see. What is BTO STC? I'm not sure what you mean by that, Brenda. Oh, buy to open, sell to close. Okay. Yeah. That's what we did there. We bought to open, sold to close on the long, but we actually did a sell to open, buy to close on the short, on the down. So no, it's, it could be either way. So let me go back over here. And again, intermarket spreads, just trading two securities against each other would be either for the spread to widen or for the spread to narrow. That's all. So first of all, when we chart these, we don't normally chart like this. This is a little confusing, isn't it? Instead, we're gonna combine the two and create what's called a spread chart. A spread chart is going to chart the physical difference between the two, <clears throat> excuse me. So right here, we can see that the physical difference between the price of those two securities is the white space between the chart. We're gonna chart that white space. So the way it happens is kind of like this. You know, in this case, I've got corn versus corn. I have the September versus December of last year. So if we had corn, the September contract was trading at 548, and you subtract 549.2, which is the price of the December corn, you can see the difference is right there. That's all you're doing is charting the price difference between two securities. So if I were to create a spread chart here on the NASDAQ versus Dow, the way this would work, let me go ahead and delete the Dow off here for now. Remove, we'll clean the chart up here. I would create it like this. We have the NASDAQ minus YMU 2022. And you can see I have a number now that's showing the price of the NASDAQ minus the price of the Dow, okay? Now, it's not that simple, unfortunately, okay? And the reason why it's not that simple is the tick values, right? If you take a look at the NASDAQ, the tick is five bucks or $20 per point. However, the Dow the tick is $5 and I should say tick. but it's also $5 per point. So we have to do something different in order to be able to chart intermarket spreads. We have to use something called notional value. Every security has a notional value. You're used to the market value. The market value is basically the price of the security. on the chart or on the quotes. So right now, if I go back to the NASDAQ, actually, I would have messed this one up. I'll go, whoops, wrong way. I'll go back here, reduce that. And right here, we'll bring up NQU 2022, okay? So there's the NASDAQ. It's right now trading at 12,860. That is the market value, okay? So right now, the NQ market value, 1,360, or sorry, 860. 
Okay, I'm just freezing it there, even though it's still moving around a little bit. Now, the notional value is the actual value of the contract, what it's worth. And that is going to be equal to the market value times the point value. That's it. So in this case, I'm going to do this in my head. We have 12860 times $20 a point. One NASDAQ contract is valued at $257,000 worth of stock. That's it. So the notional value of the NQ was $257,200. Yep, $257,200. That's a notional value right now. So the way you chart spreads is you got to put both securities in notional value form. That's why I said it's a little bit different. So going back to the NASDAQ versus Dow. I originally was showing you right here on a 15 minute chart, the market value, because all I did was take the NASDAQ minus the Dow. We need to adjust this. So what I now have to do is say, okay, wait a minute, NASDAQ is $20 a point. However, the Dow is only $5 per point. And now we actually have the notional value of the spread. And this makes it life a whole lot easier. And here's why. Going back to that previous chart that I just had without that adjustment, come on. Okay, let me do this. There we go. If you want to know how much money you're going to make or lose, let's say we find an area we wanted to buy the spread, okay? Because maybe we're at a support or demand zone right here. We want to buy the spread there and we want to target our supply zone, okay? If I ask, okay, number one, how much risk do I have if I place my stop below? You know, maybe I place my stop down below here and I want to know how much risk I have. Good luck figuring that out. <laughs> That's not that easy. But now if I go to notional value again, times 20 for the NASDAQ times five for the Dow. Now, if I have something like this, okay, just hypothetically, if that's my zone, it's not really a great zone, but that's okay. We're going to use it for now. If that's my zone, now I can easily calculate how much I would make or lose on a trade. All I have to do is figure out the distance between the two. Basically, if I'm getting in at 92,355, let me just bring this over here for a moment and zoom in and bring in my calculator again. Make life a little easier. There we go. So we're getting in at 92,355 which is that top line of my uh, demand zone. And let's say my stop is at purple, 91655. The difference between those two is 700. Guess what? That's the risk, 700 bucks, because it's notional value. Whatever you see is what you get. So if I'm going to target that supply zone at 95,460, and my entry again was 92,355, the difference between those two is $3,100. That's my risk or my reward. That's it. It's simple, isn't it? Because we're using notional value. I'm going to risk $700 if I buy here, place my stop there. And if I hit my target from, again, buying here, targeting this, I'd make $3,100. So with notional values, it makes life a lot easier to be able to figure out exactly how much you're going to make or lose rather than having to convert because the point values are all different. So I try to keep it as simple as I possibly can. Now, a great question came up. Do you leg in or do to them together? Your math, <laughs> too much math. Now, nah, all you're doing is just taking whatever you're, again, going back to a chart here, for instance, right there. If I go into a bar chart. On the right-hand side, you see point values, right? So if I want to do a feeder cattle spread versus live cattle, we just have to use notional values, <clears throat> okay? So if I want to chart feeder cattle versus live cattle, I got to multiply the feeder cattle times 500 and multiply live cattle times 400. That's all. It's actually relatively simple the more practice you get with it. It's just new, that's all, new concept. So yeah, if I was looking at, again, live cattle, um, let's say we wanna do live cattle 
December 2022 and times 400 minus feeder cattle December 2022 times 500. And that should be their correct spread expression. I'm going to go to a daily chart. Looks a little bit better that way. But yeah, you just got to multiply the point value. I'm actually using TradingView right now for this, but it can be used on different platforms as well. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> a lot of what I do for my spread trades, I actually use a platform called Omega Charts right here. So for instance, if we were just looking at feeder cattle versus live cattle. This is a trade I'm actually observing right now here. And it's kind of hard to see the expression. So let's do it this way. I am charting, as you can see, LE, that's feeder cattle, that's February of 2023. And there's my multiplier versus feeder cattle from September of 2022. And that's 500. So I just put the multipliers there and just charts it better for me rather than having to, again, figuring out how much you're going to make or lose can be kind of difficult. Can you handle this? <laughs> it's just practice. It's not that bad. You know, you're getting a lot. I'm going over this very quickly because I only have a little bit of time with you. In the Wealth with Spreads program, everything's slowed down. There's videos. You can, you can watch at your own pace. But anyway, you know, for instance, the reason why I'm doing this is if we see a move between, let's say, 25,500 and 26,000, that equates to a $500 change in price. That's all. But if we didn't use the notional values of our security, it would make it much more difficult to figure out how much you're going to make or lose. <laughs> you're not trading corn, you're going to eat it. Okay, that's fine. It's not everybody's cup of tea or cup of corn. <laughs> Anyway, so the, uh, I actually use this program for spread charting. Uh, it's a little bit easier to use for me, and I can do a lot of calculations. As you can see, I've got a lot of spread charts there. Or I can go out, let me do this. Let me save that page, go to my other spread page. A few others I'm watching right now. For instance, corn, since we just mentioned that. This is a spread trade on corn that I put on a while ago. And I'm actually going to be moving my trailing stop down because, as you can see, this is dropping very nicely. I sold the September corn, bought the March corn because I expected prices to drop. And as you can see, the September corn is moving down faster than the March corn. You know, if we were to chart them separately, I'll show you the difference. So you see U2022, that's the September. Again, I'll go to a line chart. And add in, which one was I charting? March. ZCH 2023. There's the two. Okay. And let's see, where were we here? This high is July 7th. So if we go back to July 7th, there it is. And line these two charts up. That's what the spread looks like right now. And you can see that, remember what I said? The blue is the September contract. Notice it moved down further and faster than the back month, which is the March. And it's still below it. So the spread made money because I sold the blue contract here. I shorted the blue contract and bought the orange. And they moved down. That's it. So making money on the spread. It's working out pretty well. Actually, let me see. When was this trade entered? I forget. Uh, oh, you know what? This was from, let me show you. Open. Bring this over here. May. This was a trade from May right here, I believe. Oh, no, that's not it. I'm sorry. It was not. It was, where is it? There it was. Okay, so this is the actual trade. Because what I do is, again, I identify trade opportunities and show them to my students to be able to take. So you can see right there, this was a short. We were shorting the September corn and buying the March right there. 
and the entry was supposed to be on July 3rd or using the Bollinger Bands. And we already got out of one contract because my entry was hit, or I'm sorry, my target was hit. And now you can see my stop loss is needing to be adjusted for my second contract. That's it. So we actually got in, what did I say? We got in at negative, I'm sorry, 7.0 on July 8th. So it was off by one day, it was right here, July 8th. The entry was at 7.0 right there. The open pretty much that day. And that's what we've been doing is riding this down. And now I, again, I just need to adjust my stop losses because we already hit target one, which was 11. We're kind of basing there now. And then we're gonna hold on until number two. And target number two is going to be August 14th. Or if I turn around, you know, if I see something else going on there. What is the best site for month choices, expirations? Well, it's up to you. I mean, I find a lot of these by charting and going through different charts and just finding the trade opportunities myself. I also have some other websites to help me out. Uh, what is the bar website? Oh, bar charts. This one. Sorry, no wrong one. This one, barchart.com. This just gives me the point values if you need them. So under contract specifications and futures, right there, you go to the futures tab on barchart.com. You can actually get all the specifications of different contracts. You know, if I want to know the grains, I can click on grains. They'll give me the trading hours and the point values for all those as well. It's running a little slow because I'm doing a lot, got a lot of websites open right now. Now, so let me continue on a little bit more with our discussion. Basically, you know, one of the reasons why you might want to trade spreads is margins. You know, the question came up earlier, would you hold these overnight? And absolutely I would. The risk is going to be lower than directional trading. Directional trading is what we normally do. We buy low, sell high, or sell high, then buy low, right? Well, compare the margins here. Directional margin, sorry, that's messed up. I got to fix that for the NASDAQ. Now this was older, but you know, the margins are still pretty high, right? So like 16,500. So let me, let me just verify right now, if we go out to the NASDAQ, for instance, indices right here, there it is. NASDAQ 100, the overnight margin, yep, still 16,500 bucks, right? That's a lot of money to spend. However, as a spread trader, your margins are gonna be lower. Watch, if I were to go to, here we go, margins, Intramarket. I'm going to go to the CME Equity Index NASDAQ. So if I want to trade the NASDAQ futures as a spread trade, again, if I hold overnight, normally you're going to be coughing up 16,500 bucks, right? That's your margin for one contract. But let's say we want to do a trade where we're going to hold the September versus March contract. The maintenance right there, you can see it shows NASDAQ and it shows one-to-one -one A side and B side, meaning one has to be a long, one has to be a short. They have to be opposite of each other. It doesn't matter which one's which. And then the months that I can use, I can use either September or December or March. So we're going to do the September versus March contract. The maintenance is $3,000, which means the overnight margin for the NASDAQ is only $3,300. So which would you rather use for overnight trading? $16,500 of margin, or that's got to be updated, it's $3,300. You can see it's a lot cheaper to hold these overnight, isn't it? Now, why is it so much cheaper? Because the risk is so much lower. Remember, you're both long and short. So even if you get a really large move in one direction or the other, if both contracts move together, you don't lose anything. You don't gain anything either. <clears throat> so, you know, if we were to do this intraday, which is not as common, but as I was saying, we can go ahead and take a look at NQU 2022. I'll use the NASDAQ as an example again. And remove this. Remove all that. Right here, the NASDAQ. And if I go into a five minute time frame, again, going to the beginning of the day, there it is, 9.30 this morning. From the beginning of the day, you can see the NASDAQ rallied, pulled back, still trying to go up, okay? Spreads on the queues, yeah, here it is, okay? 
at the same time, instead of just buying the NASDAQ September contract, I could have also shorted, as you saw, NQH 2023. And there's the back month contract. Now, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of volume. Maybe I'll use it December instead. I'll make it a little bit easier. This is more volume on that one. So I'll do NQZ 2022. There we go. Now it looks a little better. And you can see that the two together, starting off at zero right there, when they move up, they don't move at the same pace. That's it. So by holding both those contracts together, my margin is reduced dramatically. I don't have to carry as much margin if I want to hold overnight. Normally, again, you do these on daily charts or weekly charts, you're going to be holding longer term. So if we looked from, let's say, the beginning of this year, even, January of this year, there it is. As we move down, you can see that the blue moved down further than the orange. And even now they're moving up, okay, it's still lower because there's more weakness on the front month. So again, the margins are much cheaper. And not only could we do margins on the full-size contracts, but we could do margins on the micros too. Watch. If I go out to the micros and see if that's in here, hopefully it is. MNQ, there it is. E-mini NASDAQ micro. You can see the overnight cost is $330. Now, if I wanted to carry the individual security, the NASDAQ micro, again, for the overnight margin, what are you looking at? Maintenance is 1,500. So 1,500 times 1.1 1 .1 is 1,650. I should have known that. It's $1,650 to hold a micro overnight. But if you did it as a spread, it was only what, $330? It's a lot cheaper to hold overnight. Again, the risk is less. So that's kind of cool. You do spreads on the queues or you do spreads on crude oil. Again, the directional trading margin is much higher than the spread margin will be always because you have less risk. So you can trade for a lot less. Some people cannot afford to do overnight trading because the cost, well, now you might be able to. And, or, you know, you only have to use the micros for it if you don't want to. I was saying the risk, reduced, the risk is reduced as well. In this particular case, we were looking at a trade where we had crude oil, this is back in January last year when margins were cheaper and the price was too. But what happens is if you put in a stop loss on your trade, obviously you have a certain amount of risk. But if you put in a stop loss on a spread, typically the loss is gonna be much, much lower. So again, if I go back to the NASDAQ, let's use that as an example. I'm gonna go here. I'll show you why in a moment. I'm gonna create a new chart. So let's do the NASDAQ, as I said, NQ. And we'll use the September contract. There we go. So as a trader on the NASDAQ, clean this chart up as well. There we go. The daily time frame and clean this up a moment. There we go. So there we am on the daily contracts for the NASDAQ, just normal September contract for NASDAQ, right? Well, we can see that we bottomed out right here in June. This is where we've been rallying from recently. So let's say we were gonna buy, oh, wait a minute, I actually have a demand zone right there. Look at that. This will work out perfectly. Let's see what our ratios are gonna be here as an example. So this was a demand zone and we were gonna buy here on the retest of that demand. And we wanna place our stop below, okay? So we're actually looking to get in on July 13th, okay? So a demand zone is an area where I find um, previous orders from institutions where there's leftover buying pressure. That's actually something I describe in much more detail in the courses as well. I don't buy support and resistance. That's not the way I trade. If you go into my stuff right here, the educational videos on all my programs, you know, Wealth with Spreads is one of the programs I'm offering. So basically what I'm looking at here is right there, 
finding zones. There's a video that really explains it. I also have some videos on YouTube on it as well. But basically, in chart terms, a demand zone is an area where there's likely to be a lot of leftover buying pressure from the institutions. And therefore, that's where I should be buying. That's it. That's a simple way of looking at it. So as an example, we're going to buy this demand zone as prices returned right there. Now, my entry would have been 11,610.25, buying the top of that blue line there. Hypothetically, it puts my stop below, so minus 11,320. Probably a little tighter than that. But anyway, the risk is 290 points. Well, $20 a point, that's $5,800 of risk. Wow. Now, let's say we close out the trade yesterday at the close of business. Oops, wrong button. There it is. So our close was 12,924. You'll put it there. Okay, so that was our exit. Anyway, I can calculate all this, not too bad, but uh, if we're getting out 12,924 minus our entry, which was 11,610.25, that's 1,300 points, $20 a point, we had $26,000 of profit. Get that right, it was 26,275. Okay, and I forgot what the risk was already. So we put that in here. Again, doing the math 11,610.25 minus the stop loss 11,320. 290 times 20 bucks, 5805. There we go. Now, remember, holding overnight, one more thing. The margin overnight margin is 16,500, right? So basically, how much do we make? 26,275 divided by 16,500. We had a pretty good rate of return, 159%. Okay, I'd be happy with 159% rate of return if you bought here, sold there, right? Done. So now let's compare that to a spread trade on the NASDAQ. So I'm gonna bring up a new chart. NQ, that perfect September contract, but we're gonna create a spread here with the December contract and we'll see how that worked out. So if, again, we were expecting prices to go up on the 13th of July, 13th. And we were getting out, as I said, at the close on the 28th, yesterday. Oops, wrong button. There we go. And I don't know how much this made. We'll find out. Oops, let me clean that. Delete. There we go. So now getting in, we're going to be entering at about negative 7750. Okay. Now remember, the chart on the right is basically showing us. Come on. There we go. It's showing us the price difference between the two contracts. So it's whatever the September contract is minus the December contract. And that's the difference in the two, 66 points, basically. So as I said, the closing price on the 28th, let me bring that up. Oh, wrong one. I'm going to do this. There we go. Much better. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't give me as much. Actually, the line, better, line was better. I'll do the line chart instead. So my exit is here. Come on, why is it not helping me there? Getting the price wrong. There we go. So my entry, in this case, first of all, remember, how much was the overnight risk? I'm uh, sorry, not overnight risk, overnight um, margin. 
was $3,300 versus 16,500. Secondly, we got in at negative 7750. We exited at 6950, right? So 7750, 6950. The profit was eight points times $20 a point or $160. So we didn't make nearly as much, but we also didn't use nearly as much money either. This is not the best example, but it's an opportunity that was there. So if we gotten in on the spread here, got out of the spread there, we would have bought the front month, sold the back month, and then exited by doing the opposite. Again, $160 profit divided by 3,300 for the margin, that's only 5%. So it didn't get nearly as much as we did on the directional trade, but we also had a lot less risk. So some spread trades are better than others. The NASDAQ was not the best example to be using, to be honest with you. Okay, but that's another way of trading. And the reason why it's done is normally you can get really good rates of return. You know, if I go back, this is my tracking sheet from this month so far. Some of the spreads are here, you can see. I'll zoom in a little more on that. <clears throat> there we go. So I did silver versus gold. And you can see the trade, that was kind of expensive, $17,000 for the margin. But the trade ended up working out the first target was hit. We had $3,100 of profit. The second target was not hit. We hit a trail stop, it looks like. And we ended up with a $2,900 profit there. Now, I mentioned the trade that is still active, the corn. Trading corn versus corn. That, the margin was a little bit less expensive, $5,500. And some of them can get very, very cheap. It just depends on what you're trading. And again, we had a $575 reward, 10.45% rate of return. Let me see if I can find some of the less expensive margins here. I always put in the margins as well. <clears throat> some of these got kind of pricey. There we go, $962. I think 550, 275. So some of those can be a lot less expensive. This was NAT gas and also Euro dollars. Anyway, I'll show you the results so far this month. Here's the nice thing. Look at the win percentage. 91% win percentage. Yeah, I've got a few non, no entries. I haven't logged them all yet. I'm still working on that. That's weird. It should have shown, actually. Oh, I didn't label the NAs yet. That's why. So the percentage is off, but the win versus loss, 11 winners, one loser for the month so far, pretty good rate of return. And you can see the average rate of return is about 31%. Okay. And the average rate of return using $25,000 to take those trades is a good rate of return as well for your portfolio. So let me go back over here. And again, the probability of success is much higher. And here's the reason why. If you go long on uh, crude oil, for instance, and it goes up, you make money. That's the only way you can make money if you do a directional trade, right? There's only one way. If you buy, it's got to go up. If you short, it's got to go down. However, <clears throat> if you have, uh, no, you always have to put in margin. There's no way of avoiding margin for a trade. I mean, you have to put down a deposit to trade futures contracts. So there's always a margin deposit you have to pay. You get the money back, it's simply a deposit to cover any losses you might have in the position. But anyway, if I did a spread trade, again, crude oil. If I bought crude oil and sold crude oil, I can make a profit if they both go sideways. I could make a profit on the trade if they both go up or if they both go down. So as a directional trader, you can only make money one way, right? As if prices go in the direction you picked. As a spread trader, you've got three different ways you can make money. If you're right, or if you're wrong, or if you're only wrong a little bit. It's kind of funny, isn't it? You can actually make money three different ways. All three of those directions, the distance between the two got wider and the spread made money. So that's a higher probability of success. And another reason why the margins are so much lower when you're holding overnight. The other thing is pros do it. This is what's called the commitment to traders report. And this is an older one. I can look at more recents as well. But basically what it comes down to is you take a look at the number of spreads in comparison to all the trading that's happening on these futures contracts. And this is not a small percentage. This is about 
over 25% of the trading that's happening. So over a quarter of the time, spread trades are occurring. If I go out right now to the live COT report, you see, cftc.gov, I'm just curious to see how much spread trading is actually happening right now. We can go out to the commitment to traders reports right here. And we'll go to the CME long format. So eh, palm oil, don't care about that. Lean hogs, there we go, let's see. So looking at lean hogs right now, all the contracts all together, they're showing about 199,000 contracts being traded. Well, you can see right now, 32,000 of those contracts are spread trades. So what's the percentage of that? 32,057 divided by 199. About 16% of all the contracts. Now, with some, it's going to be a lot larger than it is for others. Same thing here. You can see there were 264,000 contracts being traded for live cattle. 34,000 were non-commercial spreading. It's not including the commercials as well. So I'm missing a little bit of data here. So there's a lot of spread trading going on. The pros do it. If the pros are doing it, why aren't we? It's kind of one of their little dirty secrets, if you will. They make a lot of money doing it. They don't want to let everybody else know about it. <laughs> Where's the beef? Yeah. So one of the neat things about spreads and the way they can help you is if you have limited capital in your account, but you want to hold overnight trades, spread trading can help. The intramarket spreads can be as low as 50 bucks, you know, depending on which kind of spreads. And that's not even micros. I'm talking about full-size contracts. If I were to go back, oh, I closed it out, didn't I? Yeah, it really is. I can go back here to that CME page I was looking at. And for instance, if I go into intramarket spreads on Forex, take a look at the British pound right there. Look at that the British pound. If you want to trade the British pound versus the British pound, the margin is only $66. I know it says maintenance is 60, but it's uh, 66 bucks. You can hold British pound overnight for $66. That's the full size contract. Pretty neat. Anyway, again, same but different. This one I did a NASDAQ trade a while back, found a trade opportunity. You can see the margin was $17,000, rate of return 32%. <clears throat> and this was a trade going from the fourth of one month until the 17th. So a couple of weeks. Back here, you can see that we had, oh, it's February 3rd through the 17th. As a spread trade, same opportunity on the NASDAQ, but a little bit different. In this particular case, the margin was reduced from 17,000 down to 1,200 bucks. And the rate of return was much higher. Compare the two to each other right there, 17,000 versus 1,200. Profit obviously is gonna be a lot less, 500 versus 5,600, but the rate of return and the risk is lower. Oh, I'm sorry, the risk is lower, the rate of return is higher. That's why spread trading can work out really well for you. So, you know, again, if you don't have a lot of time to focus on trading, spread trades are swing trades. You typically, you could do them intraday, but they're not normally done intraday. Most of the trades are designed to be set up and let go. You know, as I showed you going into some of these, actually, that I'll go to last month. Oops. So if I go to June, there we are, wealth of spreads. We did pretty well in the month of June. Okay, overall, 21 winners, seven losers, and eight no trades. As you can see, that was the final stats for the month of June. But the way we set up these trades is I identify the opportunities. For instance, here we had a winner on the Australian dollar. I'm sorry, a loser. I'll show a loser. I don't mind. Okay. Cancel. There we go. We had a couple of trades. One was on sugar. That one never hit. The Aussie versus Euro did hit. It was on a four hour, four, I'm sorry, eight hour chart, getting in on June 7th. Target was supposed to be out on the 15th or when we hit our price targets. Margin was $2,900 to get into the position. And as you can see, unfortunately, it did not go our way, ended up with a $1,000 loss. But the way these trades are set up, you'll notice the timing for them. Daily chart, 480, 60 minutes is the lowest you'll typically see. Daily chart, four hour, daily. 
These are designed to be kind of set and forget. You set up the trades and let the computer do the work for you so you don't have to be in front of the computer. We wanna make our lives easier, not more complicated. So spreads can be very, very good to reduce your cost of getting into the trades and create trades that are hands off. So again, this is just showing an active opportunity that I had way back. Uh, the trade opportunity was put in, this was on the Euro dollar and the, yeah, we hit target number one and we're just adjusting the trailing stop down to get out a little bit later. So if you don't know where to learn the future spreads, as I mentioned before, I put together a program called Wealth with Spreads, and we'll put the link back out there again if you're interested in learning more about it. But the way the program works is, as I mentioned, I'm putting together a video today. Every Saturday, typically, I release a video, and you see right there, trade ideas and videos. I put it as a PDF format as well as a live video where you can watch to see what the trade ideas are for the week. Now, before you do that, you need to learn how to trade the spreads properly, and that's where these videos are. This is on-demand education that walks you through step-by-step -step how to actually place these trades, how to follow what's going on. The neat thing is that once you learn how to do the spread trading, obviously it's a skill set like any other kind of trading. It reduces your risk, it reduces your cost of carry, it gives you more opportunities out there. And I'm basically going out and handpicking a lot of trade ideas as I mentioned before, you can go into the, P well, I'll show you the PDF. This was last week's, and this was what the video was. So I had one, two, three, four, five, six trade ideas last week. I walked through step-by-step -step why we're taking the trade, where we would take the trade, what would be the triggers for the trade. So you have all the trade information and even how to place the order based on the program I happen to be using. This one is called Trade Pro futures. In addition, you'll notice on the sheet I put in for every trade, you know, here's an example. This is the bonds trade. We did the 30 year versus 10 year. Looking to go long entry. Notice the stop loss is labeled with how much risk you would have per contract. Okay. And then your targets are also labeled as well per contract. So there's one target, I'm sorry, one contract for each target. Okay. Number of contracts per trade, again, yeah, based on the number of targets, it's one contract per target. So when we go into these results, you'll see it's reflected that way. If there is more than one trade, I'm sorry, more than one target, there'd be more than one contract, but it's just one contract per target. And you should make sure you only take trades that fit into your personal criteria. Do you have enough money to afford the margin, but more importantly, can you afford the risk? And that should only be maybe one to 2% of your trading account. Okay. And there are multiple types of trades that you can take. I try to vary it because I know people have different size accounts as well. The results are based on the live markets, but based on a simulated account. I'm going to have a fully funded account pretty soon where I'm just going to take the trades as well. I have been taking a lot of these personal trades, or sorry, a lot of these trades myself in my personal account as well. I mean, why not, right? Now, the neat thing about the trades, you'll notice over here, there's another little section that says SMS opt-in. So what happens is once you opt in, basically as the trades come into entry, I send out text messages to let you know. Or, you know, for instance, right here, this was GE, Euro dollar. The Euro dollar from July 24th can be entered short at about point, uh, negative 0 0.031. Place the stop and I put it the stop there too. Or something like this, do not enter the long yet because price is too high for a long. It wasn't in the right spot. Or, hey, we hit a trailing stop, exit your trade for a profit. The live triggers that happen to either get us in, adjust, or exit trades are sent out via text message when they're actually occurring. So basically, you're getting spoon-fed the trade ideas right here in the videos every weekend so that we're ready for when the markets open on Sunday evening. And then as the trades come into play, you're getting text messages in real time. That's pretty cool. And I basically... You know, again, I'm watching the markets and I've got programs that are alerting me when things hit either entry, stop or target. Let's see, this is on the, this one never got entered yet. As you can see, we're waiting for it to come down to the demand zone. So unfortunately on this live cattle, this is August versus uh, September. That one has not hit entry yet. So if I go into, where's the year? June, July. There's the July trades. 
I just got to find that one. I think it might be it right there. July negative 12.525. Yep, that was it right there. So this is the trade idea from July 10th. As you can see, it has not hit the entry and we're getting close to the seasonal window shutting, meaning we probably won't be able to get this trade going unless it comes into the demand zone. How quickly do I enter to exit is like indices moving quickly? They don't move that quick, but it is like any other trade. Yes, we watch these as they come close. A lot of times I'll set a, send down an alert as they're getting close to the entry. But here's the thing. This trade idea was put out on the 10th. You're more than welcome to go to your own trading program and put in the alerts yourself as well. Or sometimes you can even set up the trades ahead of time. You know, put in a limit entry with a stop and a target as good to a cancel order. Nothing wrong with that. The only thing is that if prices come down towards the entry, if there's a reason why we may not want to enter, again, you'll get an SMS text telling you, hey, this doesn't look quite right as the trade's coming in. Maybe we have too much momentum to the downside. We need to cancel entry. And that would happen before we would actually hit the zone, typically. So yeah, there's usually enough time to interpret the data as it's coming in and not have to quickly get in or freak out. You know, you don't have to rush to your computer. A lot of these trades can be set up ahead of time, as I mentioned, with good till cancel orders, or, and there's different brokerages you can get into. There's TradingView, you can also look at TradePro Futures, there's several of them out there. And there's a lot of documentation that supports what we do as well. And of course, I keep track of all the trade results, but a lot of this can also be done on your mobile phone as well. Just make the adjustments if necessary, depending on the brokerage account you're using. So uh, last thing here, I'm kind of over time here, but anyway, the Wealth of Spreads program, basically the way it works, as I mentioned before, these are just past trade results. I don't need to go through every single one, but you can see this was January. Um, never had a negative month. We've done pretty well. February. And the win percentage, the reason why things are doing so well, notice the size of the average win versus the size of the average loss. Now, I prefer to be three to one, but I can't always get that, but I'm at least maintaining two to one and a high win percentage. That's the key thing. With spreads, it's a very high win percentage with the spreads because, again, it doesn't necessarily matter which direction price is moving as long as the spread changes. So we go to March. Did pretty well in March. Again, you can see reward versus risk is three to one on the average win versus average loss. April went down a little bit, but still positive. And yeah, you know, lost a little bit on the win percentage, but still doing well. May started picking back up again and had bigger wins, but also some bigger losses. But again, maintaining a good reward risk ratio. And then June picked it back up again. Those were pretty good months, May and June. And then July, you just saw as well, doing pretty well with a much bigger win percentage. And we're about two and a half to one reward to risk on July. There's still a lot of open trades left on this one too that are winning, that have trailing stops with them. So as I said before, if you're interested in doing this, we I, I will teach you how to trade spreads if you're interested. You know, there's swing trade tactics for spread trades, looking for higher probability opportunities. It's also very good for retirement type accounts because again, the margins are relatively low because the risk is relatively low in comparison to directional trading. You know, there's still always risk involved no matter what. So anyway, if you're interested in learning more, like I said before, it's self-paced lessons on spread trading. There's weekly videos that come out with all the trade ideas spelled out and the PDF document that goes along with it that tells you exactly what trades we're looking at and why. There's real-time alerts that give you the information when the trade is ready to come into entry, hitting entry, needs to be adjusted, hitting stop or hitting targets. And there's even live bonus sessions coming up as well. I forget when the next one is, I'll have to take a look on the calendar. I had one, unfortunately I got COVID, so I had to postpone it. So there's another one that'll be coming up probably in uh, either late August or September is when we'll do our next live session. In between the sessions, by the way, at any time, you can always send me a message you can contact us. You just click on the send a message and you can let me know. Hey, I've got some questions. Uh, can I get some help on this? And we get back to you pretty quickly. So there's plenty of email support and yeah, the old MasterCard price list there. Anyway, if you're interested in the program, again, we'll put the link out there for you. There's two ways of doing it. One's either quarterly or you can do monthly subscription. With the quarterly subscription, there's a free two-week trial automatically. 
So if you decide after the first two weeks, you know, this isn't really right for me, um, that's fine. Cancel. That's we're not gonna we're not gonna charge you for the first two weeks if you do quarterly. Monthly, there's no, you know, there's no leeway there. So I can't really do that. But for the quarterly, the first two weeks, if you like it, great, then you automatically get billed after the two weeks. If not, you just send us an email message and let us know this is not right for me. We never charge your cards. We don't have to do any chargebacks. So it is a quarterly or monthly subscription. You can use whatever brokerage you want. Now, the problem with the one you're mentioning, Thinkorswim, they do not do spreads properly. Okay, so you'll be limited in the ones you can do. So if I go up to, because I have Thinkorswim, I can log in right now. And if I go into it, they have intra-market spreads, which you can do, but they're very limited in inter-market spreads. You still might be able to do the spreads, but you wouldn't get the reduced margin, which is the reason why I want to do this, right? So it may be more beneficial to use a different broker, just a little bit better. And I have some recommendations I talk about as well in the class. Um, you know, I'll just show you real quick as I go into my toss. Trade Pro Futures is probably one of the better ones because they give you that reduced margin cost to be able to hold for a lot less. So it's going to load up. Oh, it's on my other screen here. Sorry. I'll just show you what it looks like real quick. If you're interested on toss. So I can go into trade and they have pairs trader right there. So if I go into this pairs trader, there's a couple of different ways of doing this, but this is one way. So for instance, if I wanted to do the NASDAQ, we've been doing that a lot. NQ, oops, what happened here? NQU 22 versus NQZ 22. Take what happened? That should be no problem. If I did buy pair, you can see it's going to buy the September contract and sell the December contract. Or if I do sell pair, it would do the opposite. So bull spread, bear spread. And I could chart these as well. I can actually chart them on my chart page as well. I don't have to just do it here. But the problem comes in if I try to do something like this with um, corn versus soy. They may not allow it. It just depends on the, uh, the... Hmm. OZSX 22. That's why, wrong contract. So there's another spread pair that I might be able to, but if I try to do the buy pair or sell pair, it may or may not allow me to do the trade. So it just depends on which spreads are available. There's not a whole lot of them, unfortunately. So you want to use brokers that are a little bit better set up for spreads. Uh, one of the ones that I've been using is Trade Pro Futures. And there's others. Interactive Brokers is good as well. Um, I'm trying to think who else. But yeah, if you go into, I don't think it shows it on here, but you can contact them and they do, they do spreads. So it gave you better margins for that. Anyway, any other questions? I kind of went over a little bit more about what spreads are and how they work. I've shown you some of the examples that I've done. I've even shown you some of the trades that I've been looking at and watching as of right now. As I mentioned, I'm creating the video for this week. So that's what I've been doing right now. I've got my uh, format or my slides down below on a diff different screen. And when I go back over to this page, let's see one, let's see, which one is it? I think it's, yeah, these last, three are for this week, the new trades coming up, and then some of the ones back here from the previous weeks. So just waiting for this one to answer as well. But if there's any other questions regarding the spreads, let me know. If not, I want to thank everybody for being here, joining me for Trading Coaches Playbook. And I'm trying to remember, I don't think I... Is this a different program than the SPX Intraday? Yes. The SPX Intraday, or what's called SPX Secrets, that is options. So yeah, if you go back to the members section here for Wealth Builders HQ, you'll see I actually have three different programs I run for the company. Um, I run the E-mini Think Tank, which I talked a little bit about. That's just day trading and also swing trading of futures as a directional trader. I also have what you were just mentioning, SPX Cash Flow Secrets. 
that is taking advantage of intraday opportunities that we use in options on the S&P 500 index. Then the one I was just talking about today is wealth with spreads. The wealth with spreads is the spread trading of futures. So I have two futures programs and one options program that I usually work for or do. And actually, let me see, August, just trying to see on the calendar if it shows. I know I have another workshop coming up. I just don't remember where the Q&A is. It'll be on the schedule pretty soon, I'm sure. But yeah, anyway, those are different programs. So yes, you can see there's links for each one of those if you're interested. But yes, the SPX is uh, option spreads on the S&P 500 index, but it's a different program. Any other questions? Yeah, I do future spreads, option spreads, all kinds of things. <laughs> I'm a trader. I like to find opportunities, take advantage of those opportunities. So, so hand raised. You don't have to raise your hand. You can just ask a question if you wanted to. But I want to thank everybody for being here and spending a little time with me. And hopefully you got it a little more insight as to what spread trading is all about and see if you're interested. If you want to learn more, like I said, I have the program and the, the means to teach you. And I would love to have you join me. If not, uh, if it's not for you, then that's fine too. You know, like I said, if you're a directional trader, you want to learn more about trading futures the way I do. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of education in each of these programs. So if I were to go back, for instance, to the E-mini Think Tank program, you'll see that there is a lot of education there as well. Just like there was in the Wealth of Spreads, there's self-paced education and also documentation to help support it as well. So for instance, those are my other trading tools. Where is it here? Bonus videos, there we go. There's all the education in the e-mini think tank, as you can see, it's quite a bit. So I gotta get going, but I wanna thank everybody again for being here. Uh, until next time, trade safe, trade well, and take care everybody.